Welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me from Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, you just saw Carolina's season come to an end, losing 85 to 62 to number nine seed Wisconsin in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Heels finished at 18 and 11 overall. We got to run through some stats, AJ, like I always do when the we'll dive right into it. Armando Baycott led the way with 15, all of which came in the second half. Garrison Brooks last game as a Tar Heel, uh, most likely 10 points, 10 rebounds, so double double for him. Caleb Love 10 points and Kerwin Walton eight. Um, first thing I kind of want to talk about, AJ, I, I thought defensively it was a really poor performance from Carolina tonight. Uh, Badger shot 48.1% from three-point land, which is hitting threes all night. Uh, had a pretty high shooting percentage. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but start to finish, Badgers were hitting shots. It was a little bit unlike what we've what a lot of people have seen from the Badgers most of the season. This is not a team that's accustomed to putting up 85 points, especially against a, a solid opponent in Carolina, but I thought Carolina's defense really was a was something that struggled tonight and, and definitely led to the to the ultimate loss like they like it came out to. It was early because Wisconsin had success driving the ball into the lane early. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some layups and then they had dump downs where the defense rotated over and got some dunks early. I had a lot of point blank stuff. And then uh, from that uh, I think a lot of the perimeter stuff was born. You know, with six forty three left in the first half, it was twenty two eighteen Wisconsin and the Badgers were three for eleven. In the they hit nine of their next 11 shots. Mm -hmm. Most of them were not contested. I, mm -hmm. I asked Roy after the game tonight you know, how much of it was Carolina. Uh, I, I used the word allowed, but I, mean, I think we understood that when you say allowed, it's not like just a yeah, just go ahead and shoot the three. They just weren't getting out on it. And how much of it was just a bunch of guys scorching. Because Davis had hit a three from the top of the key about four minutes in the half. And Roy, I, was, I, looked over, I looked at Roy a lot tonight. And uh, I looked over at Roy and just kind of shrugged his shoulders, walking toward the other, walking toward the baseline. I've been watching actions to say, "Not much you can do about that." I mean, yeah. Guys are scorching hot. Guys are scorching hot. You kind of alluded that a little bit tonight, saying, "Look, this guy's just hit shots. We're on fire." Mm -hmm. Sometimes not much you can do about it. I do think that Carolina had a lot to do with it, but I also think that Wisconsin should get a lot of credit for just having a great night. Sometimes a team just plays off the charts out of the mind. I mm -hmm. think that was Wisconsin tonight. But our focus is Carolina. I think it would be very fair to say that this was Carolina's worst performance in the season. Yeah, definitely. Because definitely up there. Because when you think about the issues defensively, a lot of that stuff we saw tonight. I mean, they statistically, they turned out to be a pretty good defensive team. But mm -hmm. they had those times when they didn't defend the perimeter. Coming into this game, in Carolina's 10 losses, its opponents had shot 45.5% in three quarters. In the 18 wins, opponents shot 29.5%. Wisconsin was nearly 50% tonight, and Carolina lost. So that pattern held. It held mm -hmm. from, the, from the opening game right on through to tonight. It was something that when it went wrong, it went really wrong. And they didn't really find ways to kind of get out and really shut teams down once they started getting more close looks. That's just one of this team's flaws. So uh, Wisconsin scored 85 points tonight. I'm sure a lot of Wisconsin fans are thinking, wow. Uh, they, they probably figured, man, if we get no game, we've got to score news to beat North Carolina. It's not going to happen. Well, they blew them out. Carolina's yeah. largest margin of defeat prior to tonight was 13 points. Mm -hmm. And I get lost by 23. And uh, I think that Wisconsin is probably 23 points better. Yeah, I'll probably agree with that. And let's flip over to the other side of the ball for a little bit. Talk about Carolina offensively. Um, you know, I just not a really good offensive showing from the Tar Heels. Ended up shooting 38.5% from both uh, from the field and from three-point land. But you know, I just thought, you know, movement really wasn't a, a great thing for Carolina, especially in the first half. Didn't see a lot of ball, ball moving off the off the ball. I think that carried into the second half as well. Impatient at times, which is we've kind of seen from Carolina's young guards a lot this season. It's kind of been a theme of, you know, kind of being impatient and rushing, especially trying to get the ball down low and into the post, which was something that Carolina really, really struggled with as well. Just weren't getting a lot of good looks down low. I know they ended up out rebounding the Badgers, but overall, you know, we talked about the defense not being great tonight, but, you know, when you score just 62 points to a Wisconsin team like this, it can't be a, a very good offensive showing as well. Well, it wasn't. And mm -hmm. they, they, didn't, they didn't move well. They didn't cut well. The bigs weren't strong. Making it, getting open, making themselves available in the blocks. Armando had one shot in the first half, but he scored 15 points in the first six minutes and 50 seconds of the second Yeah, he was, he was a beast in the second so, half, yeah. So what he, he did, he, Roy said tonight after the game that he challenged the bigs at halftime. Mm -hmm. I think Garrison was one for seven from the floor in the first half. Mm -hmm. Armando was 0 for one. I mean, the bigs just weren't getting stuff. 
Mm. And, um, and Roy said he challenged them at halftime, and, and there was there were better moments in the second half, particularly for Romano, but that was missing in the first half. Mm-hmm. It should have been there in the first half, and it wasn't. And had it been there in the first half, had they punched Wisconsin in the mouth, perhaps things would have been a lot different. But, you know, Wisconsin opened up 8-2. Carolina was not getting good looks. Um, Caleb started driving in the lane against the bigs again, and you could just kind of see when the bigs are not getting open, and the guards start to become a little bit impatient. Just everything unraveled. We've seen it happen at times this year. It happened a lot more in December and January than it has since. Going back to the win at Duke, I think the offense has been much, much better and more consistent for the most part. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the freshman guards have been a lot better. But you know, they weren't great tonight. And Caleb wasn't great the last two games of the week. So he goes into the offseason here, which is officially underway. Um, he's going to have some decisions to make. And, and he's also going to evaluate a lot about the how he played this season, and I think he'll learn a lot from the last couple of games. Very talented player, smart yeah. kid. It's yeah. just 29 games. This was a um, this was a, a, a huge dress rehearsal for what next year could be, given uh, what could come back for this team. So uh, it just look, everything went wrong for them. They even got our mm-hmm. rebound. Yeah, no, no. Went, and, and I know you asked about offense, but Wisconsin came in number 241 in the nation. In rebound margin, minus 1.7. Mm-hmm. Carolina was number one in the nation mm-hmm. at plus 10.6. Wisconsin out rebound the Cardinals tonight, 37 34. I think only 20 teams out rebound the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. So um, that's, you could take a lot of snapshots and put it up on a, on a wall and have this collage of everything that could have gone wrong for North Carolina during, that has gone wrong during the course of the season and you could plaster it on the wall and it all kind of found its, its way into Mackey Arena tonight. And, uh, just wasn't their best performance. And, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. That was kind of what the last thing I wanted to talk about. You talked about, you know, everything kind of coming to coming to fruition tonight, everything that Carolina struggled with for a majority of the season kind of being, it kind of showed up against Wisconsin. And, and that's kind of the last thing I wanted to hit on, you know, it, it just wasn't a great night from the Tarles. You know, we, we had some defense, they, they had some struggles defending the ball. I thought energy in the first half wasn't great just in terms of matching the enthusiasm and intensity that Wisconsin was playing with. I don't think Carolina really did that in the first half, especially struggled again with, you know, shooting threes, you know, 38.5%, not bad for this team as we've seen a lot lower percentages from them. But like you mentioned, it's just a lot of these things that we've come on these zoom calls after, after these games, because we've, you know, been at everyone and talked about everyone on these three things series. And it seems like a lot of the things that we're hitting on tonight are things that we've hit on more than once this season. And and it obviously came back and, and, and really is one of the main reasons that Carolina just didn't have a shot in this one for a majority of it. Yeah, go go back to the first half. Kerwin Walton, I think his first shot attempt was with 206 left, mm-hmm. and it was three. And mm-hmm. uh, then he hit another three with about 943 left. That was, I think, his next one, and that cut the margin to 66 to 50. They were down 19 three. But when, when I was talking about the defense and defending the three earlier, well, shooting the three kind of follows a similar pattern. When the Tar Heels have, uh, uh, in games they won this year, uh, they've shot uh, around 40%, 40%, mm-hmm. 39%, and when they haven't won, uh, they've shot much, much lower. So they were 5 for 13 tonight, but only 13 attempts is a great sample size. The key to me is that Kerwin, not just tonight, but going back to Greensboro, Kerwin hasn't been getting a lot of the looks that he's getting before, say, the Florida State game, the, first, the mm-hmm. second Florida State game, the one in Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. Kind of since then, Teams have gone out, they defended him a little bit better, a little bit differently. And, and you know, I think what's really cool for him is he's going to have a lot of that stuff on film. And he knows exactly, you know, what he needs to work on to, to shake defenders, to get open a little bit more. He needs to cut better, uh, pop off screens a little bit harder, but also the use of the dribble. So this was a good year for him, but tonight was kind of a microcosm of a lot of the things that he needs to work on. And I'm not picking on him. There's a lot of guys that Everyone has to work on stuff. I have to work on stuff. I have to be a better writer. I have too many typos. I'm the worst phone texture on the planet. i got to work on that, too. So I'm not trying to dump on these guys. But when you lose in the fashion that they did, and that's our last snapshot of this team, well, you know, you, you can't help but kind of identify a lot of the things that they should use as fuel in the offseason, as fuel to get better as individuals, as fuel to get better as a team. A lot of lessons learned, and next year they're not going to have six freshmen in the ten man rotation. Yeah, so it's going to be a different not. group. They were the 325th most experienced team in America. 
-hmm. and I believe Wisconsin was the 22nd most experienced team in America. So uh, they play, they, their five best players were probably seniors, so mm -hmm. five of the six. They play, I think, six seniors in their rotation. You know what? Seniors kind of were mature and handled that stuff tonight really, really well, and the young guys weren't so good at it. So uh, mm -hmm. this game is going to serve as a reminder of all offseason. Even the ones that don't are back in North Carolina, uh, it should fuel them because it just wasn't a good performance. And you take the loss, you move on. 18 and 11, I think, in, in, in all, Jacob, it wasn't a bad season. They did improve. It was a very tough job for Roy. Um, mm -hmm. right? Roy did a good job with his team because he did get better. And there were times we watched the, the guard play and we said, oh, wow, how's this club ever really get going offensively? They scored 80, 80 plus points once in the first 11 games. They were 80 plus nine times six. Mm -hmm. Four times in those trips, they scored 90 plus and once they were 100. So they got a lot better. They just weren't real good tonight. And the season yeah, great age. I thought it was a you know up and down unit overall for for Carolina, but definitely give some credit to Roy for you know getting them a little bit better and giving them a little bit more positive performances towards the end of the season, especially last week in Greensboro. But just wasn't tonight. It wasn't to be tonight against a really experienced Wisconsin team, like you mentioned, with Carolina losing eighty five to sixty two. Go ahead. A lot of people are talking Roy. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't get paid to deflect that stuff or anything like that. Trust me. Got to be critical. Got to be critical. But I think Roy actually did a good job this year with this team because mm -hmm. they had some inherent challenges that we didn't know about in the fall. We didn't know Caleb Love would struggle as much adapting to playing the point guard. Uh, this, was, this was the first time he ever did it. And there were nights he was really good, and there were nights he wasn't really good. And if your point guard in the North Carolina system is inconsistent like that and, and really in, a, in, a, in the midst of a deep developmental phase, it affects everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, uh, Next year, I, if everybody comes back that we think is going to come back, I think this team has a really good chance this team is very, very good. And I think a lot of the stuff they went through this year will really pay off. And people say, boy, boy's doing a great job with this team. But the foundation of that teaching and coaching started, started in the last four months. And a lot of the payoff will be seen next year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. As always, Carolina losing night 85 to 62 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Actually, Roy Williams ever first ever loss in the first yeah. round of the tournament, 29 and one. So yeah, heck of a record right there. I mean, I guess it had to happen eventually, but 30 yeah, and 0 is better than that. Though. Yeah, you're not lying about that. You're not lying. 30 and 0. Thing, he doesn't care about that record. Yeah, yeah. 30 and 0 definitely sounds better than 29 and 1, but just wasn't to be for the Tar Heels and finished the, the season at 18 and 11 overall. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. As always, guys, you've been following us for you know the entire season. Thanks for following us, and, and we'll have all the post game coverage from this game over on our website at Tar Heel Illustrated. Dot com. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, share, subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.